Hello everybody, I'm Matt Mays, Senior Technical Consultant for CERNA. Today we're going to explore the Audit Management application, part of the Integrated Risk Management Program on the ServiceNow platform. ServiceNow's Integrated Risk Management Program is made up of five applications. Policy and Compliance, Risk Management, Audit Management, Vendor Risk Management, and Business Continuity Management. These five products can work together as standalone depending on the needs and maturity of your organization's IRM team. Let's look at an overview of Audit Management. Audit management on the ServiceNow platform enables organizations to prioritize, streamline, and enhance their internal audits. ServiceNow helps organizations accomplish this by integrating their audits with the other IRM applications on the ServiceNow platform. With audit management, organizations are able to ingest controls and all the related policies, issues, tasks, and other related information, scope audits from existing data, select test plans, and get sign off on audit plans. Test controls using automated indicators and testing templates. Complete field work using robust tasking to manage audit activities across teams. Automate the organization's audit review and approval process. And finally, automatically generate reports detailing audit activities and outcomes. Let's take a look at how ServiceNow's audit management program can help your IRM team. From the audit engagement workbench, our audit engagement managers are able to see an overview of all of their ongoing audits, including audits that have passed their end dates. By clicking on the link, two engagements have exceeded their planned end dates, our audit manager is able to see all of the audit engagements that have passed their end date. Our audit engagement managers are also able to click into an audit and see specific details on it. When our audit manager clicks the Q3 SAP Financials Change Management Audit, he has shown the details for this audit engagement. Scrolling down, if our audit manager clicks the edit button, a pop-up is displayed that shows the details of the engagement, including the name, who it's assigned to, a description, the objectives for the audit, the dates of the audit, and who the auditor and approvers are. Towards the bottom of the screen, we see the related lists. In the entities list, we see SAP Financial Accounting. This is the entity which is in scope for this audit. When we scope an entity into an audit, we get the other risk and compliance information in the system. If we click the Risks tab, we see the risks that apply to SAP Financial Accounting. And our auditor is able to evaluate these as part of the audit process. If we click the Controls tab, we see the controls that apply to SAP Financial Accounting. We also see their status to the far right. If we click the Test Plans tab, we see the test plans that are available for us for this audit. On the Indicator Results tab, we see indicator results that have been performed during the audit period. The Audit Task tab is a list of all of the tasks that are going to be performed during this audit. In addition to doing control tests, our auditors can also perform tasks such as activities, interviews, and walkthroughs. For example, we can set up an activity to do a kickoff meeting for this audit. When we click the control test, we're presented with the control test form. At the top, we see the chevrons indicating the life cycle of the control test. Our control tests initially start off in an open state. When our auditors begin work, they move to work in progress. When our auditors have finished work, they move to review and then finally to a closed state. On the control test form, we can see what engagement our control belongs to, who it's assigned to, what control it is testing, and what test plan is associated with this control test. We also get the control effectiveness of the control. On the schedule tab, we see the planned start date and planned end date. We also see that the actual start date and actual end date are blank. Once work begins on this control, those dates will be populated. Let's move this control test to work in progress to see. Now that our control test has been moved to a work in progress state, we see that the actual start date is populated. On the design tab, we test if the control was designed properly to achieve the control objective. In this case, we'll say that it was, and we'll mark it effective. On the Operational Test tab, we test if the control is operating effectively to achieve the control objective. In this case, we'll say that it's not. When the control test closes, we see that an issue has been generated to document the finding of this control test. Back on the Audit Engagement Workbench, we can see all of the issues that have been generated for this audit engagement. Let's take a look at our actual audit engagement record. 
At the top, we see that our audits have a life cycle. They start off in scope where we provide the audit details, determine the audit schedule, and determine what entities are in scope for the audit. From scope, our audit moves to validate where the approvers approve the scope of the audit. Once approved, we move to fieldwork where our auditors perform the actual fieldwork of the audit. After fieldwork, we move to awaiting approval where our audit approvers approve the audit results. After approval, our audit moves to either follow-up or closed. If we have outstanding audit findings, we stay in a follow-up state until those findings are resolved. And then finally, our audit closes at the end of the audit. On the form field, if we click on type, we see that our audits can have numerous types and that the audit can be assigned to both internal and external audit teams. We don't have to limit ourselves to just internal audit teams either. For example, the IT team could use an engagement to conduct an internal assessment of IT systems. On the schedule tab, we see that we have the engagement plan start and end date. These are our estimates of when we are going to start and end our engagement. Our engagement also tracks the actual start and actual end date. This can be valuable information for reporting. Under the field work date section, we see that we have additional planned and actual dates for our field work. This enables us to track our actual field work inside the overall engagement. On the results tab, we're able to record our results and opinion of our audit. Our result options are satisfactory, adequate, or inadequate. Finally, on the report tab, we have the information that is used to generate the audit report at the end of the audit. The knowledge base field captures the knowledge base that the audit report will be stored in. The report template field is the template that will be used to generate the audit report. And the KB article field is the actual article that is generated from the template. Here we see an example of a published audit report from a completed engagement. This is an example of an out-of-the-box template. These templates can be customized to meet your organization's needs. Thank you for watching Audit Management in the ServiceNow platform presented by Cerna. Like this video and subscribe to our channel for more great integrated risk management content. For more information or to contact us, see the information on the screen.